Welcome to episode 42. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. It's a new year, and if you're like me, you are already thinking about warmer weather and taking that getaway to that tropical or exotic destination. Maybe you plan to travel to Walt Disney World or Universal Studios. No matter what kind of trip you plan, 3D Travel Company is the company for you. Just visit 3DTravelCompany.com and let them know that Trenton sent you from Who Did That Voice. Or you can book on www.whodidthatvoice.co and click the Book Now button. For a limited time, Who Did That Voice listeners can receive a Disney gift card for qualifying Disney and Universal trips booked and traveled by the end of 2017. Book today and travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Before the show gets started today, I just have a quick word for you. Hey everyone, in just four days, it will be Valentine's Day. So from me and all of my crew here at Who Did That Voice, happy Valentine's Day 2017. And coincidentally, it's Valentine's Day with special guest, Linda Ballantyne. Oh, well, I hope you guys stay tuned and enjoy this amazing interview with Sailor Moon. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the show. All February long of 2017, we will be covering the original Deke release Sailor Moon animated series from the 1990s. And today's special guest is Sailor Moon. I'm Sailor Moon. I fight for fair play and I fight for love. Wake up now. I can't control the power of this crystal alone. You must help me. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, we have Linda Ballantyne joining us today. Linda, thanks so much for coming on the show. No problem. Well, Linda, the very first thing we always like to do when we have a special guest on the show is just to get a little background on the individual we're speaking with. And how did you break into the voiceover industry? Well, I went to theater school. I knew that I wanted to go into acting. So I, um, I went to theater school here in Toronto. I live in Toronto, Canada. And in theater school, they have a whole bunch of different courses. You don't just sort of get on stage and start acting and doing that kind of stuff. You've got vocal technique. You've got movement. You've got dance. You do it all. And one of the courses that they had was microphone technique. As soon as I got in front of the microphone, as soon as I put those headphones on, I knew that I loved it. I loved it. I loved hearing the sound of my own spit between my teeth. I loved the fact that I could just sort of lose myself in my own head. And I just kind of got it. I just knew exactly what I should be doing. And so when I graduated, I had an agent already. And when I graduated, um, I said to my agent, I, uh, I, I think I want to do voice as well. And they said, okay, well, you've got to have a, a demo. And I said, well, actually, I do have a demo because I got it when I was in theater school. And they said, okay, great. Let's hear it. And they went, okay. Uh, what we do is we just sort of send you out for auditions and we'll just see how you do. So I said, okay, whatever. And I went to my first audition and I got my first audition. And I think after that, my agent just believed in me. It was just like, okay, you are going to work and you're going to work a lot. And, and I did. And I was really lucky. Like I've just been lucky the whole way through. That's how I feel. Cause I think it's the greatest job in the world. Absolutely. Linda. Well, that is so fantastic to hear. And, uh, you definitely seem very passionate about it. And that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not, it's not the kind of job that anyone can do, too. You know, it's funny because we have a lot of people that, that want to get into voice acting. There's a, there's a heck of a lot of people out there that want to do that, and, and it's great. It is the best job in the world, but you do know how to ha have to know how to act, and that's something that a lot of people don't really stop and consider. You know, like, are you the type of person that could get up on stage and do a scene or do a play or do something like that? Because that's what they need. You need to be able to act. It's not just having a great voice. Because I've kind of got a plain voice. I don't have anything special about my voice, really. 
but you know, I certainly can change my voice to make it sound like different things. But the big thing is you have to know how to act. You have to be able to lose yourself. Absolutely, Linda. I appreciate you sharing that with us because, you know, people will listen to the show and they'll be fans of voiceover and some may consider joining voiceover as an industry career path for them down the road. And Uh it helps them to know that it's not just, hey, you have a voice, come use it. You know, you've got to have some acting skills and and really not be afraid to be out there and and use your voice uh, and not just be like, I have this one great voice, but tons of different voices. So yeah, exactly. Well, Linda, back in the 90s, there was a show called Sailor Moon, which aired... Never heard of it. (laughs) Oh, wait, hang on. Yes, I have. (laughs) And uh, that show aired from 1995 to 2000, and uh, this was my very first anime that I watched as a kid. It was one of my... It is my absolute favorite and still is to this day. And Linda, would you please share with my listeners, what was that little role you played on that show called? I played uh, a smaller character in the show called Sailor Moon. (laughs) Yes, I was the voice of Sailor Moon. (laughs) Fantastic. What was it like working on that show with that great cast of, of different people? You know, we actually didn't get to work with each other. That was the weird thing about doing that show is you you go into the into the studio all by yourself. So you're we're working with amazing people like Susan Roman. I mean, she is she is God as far as I'm concerned when it comes to the voice world. And uh, I didn't get to go in with her all the time. Every now and then I would, but just being on the same show as all these great people it was just like, oh yeah, this is awesome. This is so much fun. It's why you do it. <laughs> I, and I guess I didn't think about the fact that because it's an anime, that was the reasoning behind y'all not being able to work together more as a group, right? Well, not because it's anime, because a lot of times with um, any kind of animation, you often you'll usually just go in by yourself. It just depends on how they're doing it. Sometimes you'll do some shows where they do ensemble. So you get all the actors into the studio together and you get to play off each other. And it's really, really fun. The drag about doing ensemble is it takes longer because if somebody is off, if they, if they can't get a line right, and that happens all the time, somebody might be having a bad day or they just can't get a line right. And when they can't get a line right, then we have to start again, and we have to do it again, and you have to do it again until they get the line right. So it can, it's a lot more time consuming. If you get one person in the studio and you go, okay, we're just going to do your lines, let's go. It's just boom, 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 and you get it done quick. And that's what Sailor Moon was all about. They needed it done quick. <laughs> we would have some days where we would be recording, and literally the next day it would be going to air. And it was just, you know, you're getting it done as quickly as you possibly can because they, they need this tape to get out to the network so they can put it back, so they can put it onto the station that next day. It was crazy. Wow, that is so fast. I didn't even realize that they would put it together that quickly and then air it. Well, and then not only that, this is before the internet. So it wasn't like you could even just put it onto the internet and send it out. Okay, it's coming to you right now. It had to be delivered. It had to be (laughs) hand-delivered. Like, I've got the tape. Let's go. Move out. Move out. Like, it was was crazy. Well, I bet they had a lot of couriers for that kind of stuff. (laughs) I did, too. (laughs) So, Linda, with, with you playing Sailor Moon on the show, I believe you were the third actress to play her. Is that correct? I was. First okay. was uh, Tracy Moore, mm-hmm. and she did, I think, I'm not sure how many episodes she did. I think she did about six or eight episodes, something like that. Okay. She also directed it to begin with. And then there was some kind of a falling out, so she stopped doing it. And then uh, Terry Hawks took over, and she did about, I think she did something like 66 episodes, something like that. And then she got pregnant with twins. My favorite oh, children wow. in the entire world. And I have three children, and I think I love her children more. No, <laughs> not really. Don't tell my children I said that. <laughs> but she, she, uh, she was pregnant with twins, and so when they asked her if she would do it, she just said, I, I can't. I'm, I'm ginormous, and I can't move, and I can't do anything right now. And my, the kids are my life right now. So, so they uh, auditioned, and I got the part. That's fantastic. And how long did you play Sailor Moon? I think I did... I want to say 90-something episodes. Okay. It was quite a few. It was 80-something or 90-something episodes. I'm not really sure. You know, it's funny because there was the movies as well, but we didn't even know that we were doing movies when we were doing them. We would just go in and we would record, and you just kept recording, just keep going, um, <laughs> doing whatever they wanted you to do. And, you know, we found out years later, oh, those were movies? Oh, <laughs> oh that's cool. Okay. 
<laughs> Sailor Moon S and all of those other things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what was the, why was there a transition from you to another uh, woman that played Sailor Moon? I can't remember the other two actresses after you, but. After me. Well, well, with, from the dub that we did, there wasn't anybody after me. Okay. However, now they're doing a new, um, they're doing a redub. They've redubbed the entire series that we did. And that's got Stephanie Shea in it. And okay. then they've also done the Sailor Moon Crystal. Um, I think maybe the only other people that you might have heard, there's um, Jennifer Seehe, but she uh, she was just the singing voice. Okay, she was just the singing voice. That's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. So technically there was... So, um, so there was three. Okay, so you were the last of the original dub then. Okay. That's right. And so they're doing the same episodes, but they're revoicing them now? Yeah, they've already done it. They've done it. And uh, it's interesting. <laughs> what they've done is, you know, the 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 one that we did, there was a lot of there was a lot of controversy because, you know, when you had the um, Sailor Uranus and Neptune, that kind of stuff, yeah. and Sailor, Sailor Neptune and Uranus were cousins, and that's the way they build them was cousins. And when you saw those cousins come together, and there was little hearts around them, and you heard ooh, and they looked really romantic with each other, and you'd say. They're cousins? Cousins? <laughs> Come on, they don't look like cousins. And then finally they said, no, 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 they are actually lesbians. But in the North American market, they're going to be cousins. And it was sort of like, what? That's dumb. Why don't you just let them be lesbians? But at the time, they just felt that the North American audiences weren't ready because they were really billing this to be, you know, a show for kids. So they said, no, 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 no. We can't have anything like that. There was nothing like that on TV at all anywhere. So they said, nope, nope, not going to happen. And um, so now they're they've decided to redub the whole thing, the whole series, only they're going to let them be the lesbians that they're supposed to be. And they're, you know, they're changing some of the stuff to make it more like the original. Okay. We had to cut a lot of stuff out, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just curious because, you know, I, wasn't, I didn't realize that they were actually redubbing the original series, but why didn't they bring the original people back? <laughs> See, that would have been really nice, wouldn't it? Although, having said that, they would have been just doing what they've already got. So yeah. I'm sure that part of it was to sell more tapes, to more, more DVDs. Yeah, maybe. For sure. I'm sure that that's a huge part of it. Um, and I think it, it was also done in the States, and we're all Canadian. So to get us down there, to do it all down there, we'd have to have green cards and, and, and. So forget it. They just said, nope, not going to happen. Oh, so all the redub was done in the U.S. Oh, yeah. But the original, when you guys all did it, it was up in Canada, right? Oh, yeah. Totally Canadian, thinking. eh? Well, you know, and it's so funny. I've talked to so many people lately in Canada, Gary Chalk, Matt Hill, several others, um, Sam uh, Vincent, I believe. And it's just so funny. I was like, I didn't realize how many cartoons are done up in Canada. Because, uh, but you, but you listen, and the one word I can always catch now is the sorry instead of sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we get we, they ride us a lot on that. The directors will say, uh, "Can you do that again?" Because you said sorry, and I was like, "No, okay, but, sorry." It always feels so weird for us to go sorry, sorry. But even and when I was watching, about, we we try to get rid of the out and about. Sorry, out and about, out and about roof. That's another one. But that is the that sorry is the only word that ever tips me off to going, hey, that's Canadian. But you know, as a kid, you don't even really pick up on those things. Um, but you know, it's, we it's, don't. We certainly don't know what we're doing. They're doing. We're doing it. <laughs> it's natural to you, so why would it seem odd? They you know. know. Uh, wow, that's fascinating. Well, you know, for my listeners out there who are Marvel fans, uh, you guys may remember the show The Avengers: United They Stand, which aired back in 1999, and Linda had the opportunity to play Janet Pym aka wasp who was the wife and love of hank pym aka ant-man linda you got it baby <laughs> linda what was it like getting to play such an iconic comic book heroine well that one was particularly special because not that sailor moon wasn't particularly special they all are quite frankly yeah. but that one was my very first animation that i ever did and it was the very first one that i ever auditioned for and when I auditioned for it, I was going up against, it was between, we, they finally narrowed it down to two actors and it was me and Susan Roman. And oh, wow. Susan Roman to me was God. Like I was just, Oh my God, she's done everything. She's so great. Oh, oh. and there I was in this room with Susan Roman going, Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going to get Susan Roman. There's no way I'm ever going to get this. Oh, how do I make myself sound like Susan Roman? Well, and you know, you can't make yourself sound like Susan Roman. She's Susan Roman. She's, she's God. <laughs> so, I, I sort of, you know, I was sweating it out in this room, just going, what are we going to do? You know, gonna... And then I thought, stop, you idiot, first of all, because 
first of all, they've picked it between you two. So they've already heard you. You didn't even know Susan Roman was in the mix. So they liked what they had. So just do what you were doing before. Like do, just act. Like act. Be, be, be Janet Van Dyne, man. Be it. So um, I did it and I got the part and it was like a miracle. And the best part about it was my brother, my older brother, is a huge comic book fan. <laughs> so I was able to phone him up and go, hey, Rob, guess what? I just got the part of uh, Wasp in the Avengers. And he's like, what? What do you mean? What do you mean you got the part? And I said, well, in, in the cartoon on TV. And he's like, okay, stop, slow down, and let's go back again and discuss this. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty good. It was pretty fun. And they, you know, they'd interviewed, they, they really big, did a big thing on it. They interviewed me for uh, one of the comic books and had a big article in one of the comic books with me in it. So that was kind of cool, too, because I had never done anything like that. Wow. Yeah, so it made my brother very happy, too. Well, that is super awesome. I bet your brother kept that article, too. <laughs> I, he better have. <laughs> He's probably got it framed up on his wall, next to his wasp oh, I guess statue that. of no, you. No. My, my family doesn't go too far out of their way to, <laughs> to, praise, to praise us, <laughs> each other. <laughs> well, that is so fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, because, you know, I'm a huge Marvel fan. I love DC, but Marvel's always had a much more special place in my heart, just because the characters are more familiar to me from when I was growing up. I know. There's something about Stan Lee. He knew what he was doing, man. He really did. He really knew how to touch audiences and reach them from all different angles and ages. It was, it's amazing how he did that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. uh, Anyway. Well, Linda, what was it like working on the PBS show Cyber Chase as your character Wicked? There's another. What are you doing? You're picking all my favorite parts. (laughs) Wicked is my absolute favorite part that I've ever done. Um, She is the most crazy off the wall witch. She loves herself so much. And the best part about her is she is evil. She is a villain. And there's nothing more fun than playing a villain because they are always (laughs) so sure that they are going to win every single time and then every single time they lose and that going from that I am the greatest thing in the world to what I lost what no I just there's nothing more fun than that I, I I've had a blast and it's funny because a few weeks ago I was at a comic-con and Christopher Lloyd was there and Christopher Lloyd played hacker And Hacker was kind of my love interest slash my arch nemesis in the show. (laughs) But we never, ever got to work together. I've never met him. I I was dying. I was going, oh, when am I going to get to meet Christopher Lloyd? So I'm at this Comic-Con, and he's sitting there in the green room as we're waiting to go out to do stuff. And I I went over to him. I said, hi, I'm sorry. I just had to say hi to you. Um, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Linda Ballantyne. And he's sort of looking at me like, "Mm mm-hmm. And what's you know, whatever. And I said, um, I I just wanted to say hi because we've never met before, but we've worked together an awful lot. And he gives me (laughs) one of his Christopher Lloyd looks, you know, that only Christopher Lloyd can do. And I said, yeah, I, I actually played wicked on cyber chase. And he just went, Oh, and he stood up and he went wicked. And he gave me this ginormous hug. And I'm just like, Oh my God, I'm being (laughs) hugged by Christopher Lloyd right now. <laughs> so that's, that was pretty darn fun, I'll tell you. <laughs> and then we fantastic. ended up talking a lot about the show and stuff like that. But it was just, I was like, when are we going to get to work together? Come on, <laughs> come into the studio when I'm there, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was actually going to ask if you guys worked together or if you knew him, but that's fantastic. I'm glad you got to it before <laughs> I got there. So I'm just going to keep talking is what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to answer all your questions before you answer any, hey, ask me any of them. <laughs> hey, it's fantastic. It's like you're reading my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Linda, with Cyber Chase, is it still running? Because I couldn't tell. I know it was airing up until 2015, but I don't know if it's still currently airing. That's a very good question. I'm not really sure either. I don't. Uh, yes, I think it's still airing, yes. But I don't know. I think we're going into another season. I think we're going to be doing another season again. So wow, we've, fantastic. We've done a lot of seasons. Yeah. Well, that means you guys great. are going to go into season 11. That's a long time running show for PBS. That's fantastic. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's fun, though. It's a great show. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I have to admit, I've watched it a lot of times. I have little brothers, so, uh, you know, I watched it with him, and I find it very fascinating. I love how they deal with the math problems and, uh, you know, just kind of help do the fractions and stuff, because fractions were something that I always had a problem with as a kid. You know, I'm dyslexic, and I struggled with that through my uh, younger years and into my teenage years some, um, and not so much now you kind of learn how to overcome those struggles but it was so great when they would take a pie or something and they'd break it into fifths and say you know we're taking two pieces of the pie you know and just that kind of stuff that was just it was like yeah and you get it because it's you you can see it and you go oh 
I know. I often think that, like, why didn't they have that when I was younger? Because, you know, <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. But what's interesting, too, is because I love that character so, so much, yeah. I didn't want to just let her go. Like, I felt like there should be more more stuff with her. So I've actually been writing um, another show that is, revolves around her. And... Um, but I don't want to say too much about it because I think it's a great show. And I'm, I'm hoping to sell it really soon. Ooh, that'd be cool. So there you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that'd be fantastic. So would it be... I a- know. I actually should have... God, I, I don't know why I didn't nail Christopher Lloyd to the wall and say, hey, I'm doing the show. Do you want to be in it with me? <laughs> just same characters. Let's do it. What do you say, Christopher? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I always just sort of choke and go, I'm just being a big fan girl right now. <laughs> <laughs> So is it a show that would potentially air on PBS in the future as yes. well? Kind of a co-thing? Yes, okay. absolutely. Fantastic. That'd be great to see. It'd be, uh, I bet it would be a great evolution of the show. So Yeah, I think, I think it would be too. I think it is the natural evolution of it. It's not about math, but yeah. it is a learning one. It's another learning one. So. Fantastic. Well, I mean, if it's got the same premise of what Cyber Chase has, I think it would do extraordinarily well. So Yeah. I'm excited to see that. Hopefully it'll blossom soon and we can all take a look. <laughs> okay, fingers crossed. Fingers and a listen. Crossed. And a listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so besides animation, uh, what other types of voiceover work have you had uh, a chance to work on, Linda? Oh, I do a lot of commercials. A lot, lot, lot of commercials. Okay. Um, and TV, radio commercials. I don't do a lot of narration anymore. I used to do a lot of that, but I don't do a lot of that. I, I don't love narration. It's kind of boring. <laughs> okay. But anything that's character-based, I love. And now I'm just just starting to dip my toe into um, gaming. But I haven't done any game. I've done one game, but it was just some, you know, serial type gaming thing. It was just, it was a small little tiny thing. But that's what I really want to get into. Well, if any of you guys out there are making a fan-made video game and you need the voice of Sailor Moon, she is available for hire. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm in. I'm in. Just just call me. I'm hey, waiting. I'm by know. the phone. <laughs> and that number is 555-4455. Oh, what? <laughs> uh, okay. So what kind of advice would you give, Linda, to somebody who might be interested in voiceover for a career path, not just as a hobby? Definitely, definitely. Like I said earlier, Make sure you know how to act. Make sure don't don't just just assume that because you can do voices, because you can imitate people, that you are going to be perfect for the job. Because when you go out to do these auditions, when you go and you go, okay, I'm ready to do this. Here I go. I'm going to go to an audition and I can do this. You're going to be sitting beside me in the audition room. If you're a girl, sometimes if you're a younger boy, <laughs> you're going to be sitting beside me in an audition room or Susan Roman or Toby Proctor or any of the big voice actors out there, because we all still have to audition. We all go out there. We're all fighting for the same stuff. So you've got to be really, really ready. That said, I would say also read everything out loud everything out loud, like read the milk carton out loud, read the newspaper out loud, anything. You see street signs, just start reading out loud so you're comfortable with your own voice. And, you know, you just, you start reading things in different ways. Say, you know, do it in different ways, not necessarily even in a character voice, but maybe with more enthusiasm or maybe, you know, give yourself, you know, like now I'm angry. I'm going to read the newspaper angry. That's always fun to do. (laughs) There's nothing (laughs) better than reading the newspaper angry, especially when it comes to Donald Trump, I'll tell you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but that though that would be one of the main things the other thing i would say is you know if you're driving around the car like when you're listening to the radio and you hear the different ads that are on mimic them like say them like that they're saying them on the actual ad because those are the people that are working right now and that sound that they're doing is what people like they're the hot sound so you might as well learn how to do that too (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I have found myself reading street signs with different character voices at times. Next left, McDonald's. <laughs> hey, you know who wrote that jingle? Who? Uh, Justin Timberlake. Are you serious? I'm here for you, baby. I'm here for you. I actually had to do that jingle as a cow who was clucking like a chicken in a McDonald's commercial. Wow. And I had to be like, buck, 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 buck. So I had to do that. <laughs> that is a great tune. And I can't believe Justin Timberlake did that. That's fantastic. I did I not know. know that. So I appreciate it. I just found that out the other day. That is fantastic. Wow. Justin Timberlake made the McDonald's mm-hmm. tune that is like iconic around the world. <laughs> he needed the money, though. He needed the money, you know. Oh, yeah. He's so <laughs> broke on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> okay. Wow. That is crazy. I appreciate you sharing that. You know, little tidbits that I wasn't expecting always make my day. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have a website, Linda, or a way in which fans could reach out to you or if somebody was maybe even inquiring about hiring you somehow? Um, you know, you know, I should have a website and I don't. <laughs> uh, but I am very open to Twitter, to um, Facebook and uh, Instagram. I'm very open to all that. Like just just write to me there. And I'm, I'm watching. I'm there. I'm listening. My agent is also out there. Um, I'm with um, AMI in Toronto. That's the name of my agency, Artist Management Inc. I think that's what it stands for. God, that's terrible. I don't even know that. <laughs> but they're always out there looking out for me. And what is your Twitter? How do people find you, Linda? Oh, at L.A. Ballantyne. So it's B-A-L-L-A-N-T-Y-N-E. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that so people can reach out to you, whether they're looking to uh, hire you or just inquire about voiceover or just say, hey, because they're a fan of uh, Sailor Moon or Cyber Chase. <laughs> yeah, and I do get a lot of people writing to me, too, and I, I have no problem. No, no problem answering questions. I love it, in fact. Fantastic. Well, I have two more questions for you. And the first is, what is your favorite cartoon character from growing up and why? Oh, I love Daffy Duck. <laughs> I love Daffy Duck, and I loved, um, what is it, Martin the Martian? Loved, 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 and I loved the Jetsons. Oh, my God, I loved all those ones. Um, I loved, what is it, Martin the Martian? Is it Martin the Martian? Is that what you call him? It's you Mar make me very angry. You know that one? It's Marvin. 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 I knew that wasn't quite right. He's my I favorite. I loved yeah, he uh, he has to be everybody's favorite, right? It oh has to no, be. my plutonium forty five has been stolen. <laughs> no. See, <laughs> what is not to love? I also love the Great Kazoo. I love the Great Kazoo. <laughs> Whenever he was on the uh, the Flintstones, that yeah. was like the best. Yeah. Daffy Duck and Marvin, and uh, those are two of my favorite. I love Daffy, but Marvin is like, he's actually one of the pinnacle reasons why this show exists because of what my father did as a, uh, when I was a young boy, mimicking the voice and kind of got me onto it. That was my first voice I ever mimicked and uh, kind of got, got me onto the path at four years old of doing what I'm doing now without ever realizing how it would affect me, you know, 30 years you later. You know what? So. It kind of was the same for me and same with, um, same with, um, the great kazoo, like, you know, just the whole, well, dumb, dumb, you know, that was sort of the, where wicked kind of came. I was going to say, bit. was that your inspiration yeah. for wicked? Well, <laughs> yeah. She always does, does that all the time. Packer. Okay. Our lives are always the inspiration for what we create in life. That's right. <laughs> art imitating life, life imitating art. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And Linda, my last and final question for you today is, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Oh, my God. That's so hard. <laughs> That's hard. It is a deep question. Do you question. ever choose your legacy? Like, is that what happens? Do you actually choose your legacy, or does it happen? That's the question I would like to know. I think it's, I think it's a 50-50. You kind of have a goal of what you want to reach for, but what does that legacy become? What in life draws you to the point to where your legacy ends up going, if that makes sense. Wow, that's a tough one, especially on the spur of the moment. What are you doing to me? Why I'm making you, you have to think. To <laughs> Welcome to school. <laughs> I know, thinking out loud. What would be my? What do I want my legacy to be? I certainly would love to be known for what I've done. That's for sure. Um, I don't know. I don't think. I don't think I've got it yet. I don't think I'm there yet. What I want my legacy to be. I don't know. Like a lot of times people will say what they want their legacy to be like when people look at the sum of their life and the sum of their work, you know, that I was a great mom or I was a great mom and I achieved so much in the voiceover industry that my works kind of spoke for themselves or, you know, just kind of like, what do you want people to say about you in a hundred years? You know, kind of that thing. Oh man, I make great apple pies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, I would like them to say that I never gave up, that I always, that I fought because I have fought more in, in this industry. It is such a dog eat dog industry. It is such a hard industry to survive in. And I have survived and I had, but I had to fight for it. I couldn't just sit back. There were, there were times, there were times I would be doing a show. I did one show. I remember one show where the director just just decided for no reason that one of the line that I was doing was no good. And we did it 47 times, the same line. 
the same line 47 times. And it was, you have no idea what that is like to say the same bloody line over and over and over again and in different ways every time, but it's never good enough. And finally I said, can we take a break? And I walked into the bathroom. I looked at myself in the mirror. I said, okay, just, just go say, obviously you're not the right person for this job. And I'm okay with that. And just walk away and say, cause it was killing me. I was, I, I was so in my own head and I was so sure that they hated and I was about to walk back into that room and just say, okay, you know what? Obviously I'm not right for this job. So why don't you just recast that? that you know, I really don't mind. And then I went, no, you know what? I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. If they want to fire me, they can fire me, but I'm not going to walk in there and just go, okay, I'm just going to fire myself. That's okay. No. And I just walked back in there and said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the next line. Forget this line. Let's just go to the next line and just continue from there. And then we'll go back and redo that first line. And we did that. And from then on, it was perfect. Every single one <laughs> I did, I got on the first, first try, everything. I did that show for a few years and everything was great. But I, it would have been so easy for me, so easy. And they probably would have said, yes, this is great. Just walk away. But so I've, I've, I have fought for, for what I've got, I would say. I'm a fighter. Well, that's fantastic, Linda. With the passion in your voice and with the way that you talk, I can tell you're a fighter. You're a very powerful <laughs> spoken woman, and uh, it's very evident that you're not a woman to back off, which is perfect yeah. because it's very much the essence of you know a lot of your characters, especially Sailor Moon. She was a very tough chick, you know, and she was hardcore, and she did have her breakout moments where she cried, but you know she was <laughs> she was a tough warrior chick, even if she said she didn't want to be a warrior at times. So. That's right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. But uh, that's fantastic. So you're definitely the embodiment of that character, which is fantastic because she is like my absolute anime favorite character. I can't even talk. She is my <laughs> favorite anime character of all time. So I love it. I love it. That's so nice. That makes me <laughs> that makes me so happy. You have no idea. Well, I mean, back in the in the U.S., there were some animes, especially around that time frame, uh, from I think even the '80s and stuff. But there weren't as many as like there are today. You know, especially dubbed in English. And uh, she was the first one that I saw, and I latched onto it, and I loved it. I loved the music, number one. Uh -huh. And number two, I just loved that it was so out there and so, like, the girls' motions and movements, you know, and it's part of how the characters were drawn in Japan and everything. But, you know, the way anime was, it was just so over the top, and I loved it, and I loved, um, you know, her romance with Tuxedo Mask and just, I don't know, it was just... It was, something it was to just it. different from anything that had been done. Yeah, it was. It was. And mm -hmm. that's why I liked it so much because it just stood out in a way that nothing else could compare with back then. So Yeah, agreed. But uh, anyway, Linda, it has been an absolute pleasure and honor having you on the show today. Would you just give us a closeout today as Sailor Moon? Yeah. I'm Sailor Moon, the champion of justice. And I say on behalf of the moon, I shall right wrong and triumph over evil. And that means you. Oh, Darian, oh, Darian, wait, the, the show's over, hang on, don't go out without me, oh. That was a, like a Canadian, don't go out without me. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Or, uh, keep listening to who did that voice, or I shall punish you in the name of the moon. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Linda Ballantyne, the voice of Sailor Moon. And if you did, please stop on by my Contact Me page at www.whodidthatvoice.co. I'd love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us this Friday for our next special guest, Toby Proctor, the voice of Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they've voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.